My definition of innovation is when you got something that nobody wants. That's how you know you got something. Anybody in science actually knows. Innovation implies newness, but there's nothing really that's new anymore. Taking many different disparate things and putting them together in a way that they're used for something that you didn't think of before. So they may be things that are quite mature, but put together in a new way, they're greater than the sum of their parts. Think back to the 1960s, the culture at that time was very pro-science. There was high regard for people going into the sciences and engineering, so a lot of us we're just following the cultural zeitgeist. Back in the old days at SciX, it was a completely different uh, organization. It was, SciX was a very small company where it was really, really driven by the scientists. These were people of extremely highest caliber. Bill Davidson, Bruce Thompson, and another fellow, Don Douglas. That culture of basically scientists running the company was strong. Well, this might come as a surprise, but it was more about enabling everybody to do everything they could to violate every rule of work-life balance. The divorce rate was pretty high in, in the R&D group at those times, but frozen TV dinners were free to get you through the night and weekends. But this is exactly the kind of thing that groups of young scientists thrived on. SciX at that time was known for its mobile detection system, so they would go to disaster sites. We developed the first single quadrupole dedicated atmospheric pressure ionization mass spectrometer, designed it to be mounted in mobile laboratories, but what immediately e emerged was an understanding that the complexity of polluted air was far greater than we'd ever imagined. That led the development of the first commercial triple quadrupole mass spectrometer, and this iconic instrument was called the TAGA. It was bomb-proof. And there was a big train crash, and most of the town or city called Mississauga was evacuated because of the, the contents of, of the rail cars. And so SIAC sent in a mobile monitoring system through the Ministry of Environment in Ontario, and they monitored where the plume went. So they would drive around and they would look for the traces of the noxious materials, and they, would, they mapped out which parts of the city had to be evacuated. Things like going after train wrecks with hydrocyanic acid spills, and one of the big ones, the Love Canal disaster in, in Buffalo, New York. It was a situation of chemical waste being buried, neighborhoods being built on top of them, and carcinogens leaking into the basements of these homes, and cancer rates skyrocketed. And this TAGA instrument was one of those on-site identifying what and quantitating what these materials were. And a lot of them were some of the worst actors in existence, the, the dioxins. Back in those days, if you were nearby, you wanted to know that it was either safe to stay or not safe to stay. And in most cases, it was not safe to stay. We as a population, as humans, have, have become conscious of the world around us in terms of environmental pollution, for example, food safety, water quality. The science has been developed in parallel with our, us understanding how technology can be used to benefit us from a pop, as, a, as a population. The way we communicate, that's got faster. The world's got faster. The computer systems have got quicker. What's it going to look like in the future is the other question. It turned out that developing these, all the technology around successful atmospheric pressure ionization was very pressing and would pay enormous dividends in the future. If there was any mistake we made, it was working on an advanced technology for all the wrong reasons. We were focusing on it primarily for, like I mentioned, pollution control, but its true value emerged 10 years later when we realized that it could be used 
very powerfully as for a method of liquid sample introduction into the mass spectra instead of gases. This opened up the biomedical field.